great. Oh. Oh. This was built in the 1430s. It's buffalo hide because of all the civil war. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. That is not the sort of thing you clicked on the video for. I'm really excited because the crypt is very, very special. I never stop being impressed by these places. But there is a mistake somewhere in this chapter. If you haven't got a cat with you, then this is how you can get your information. Their faces are the actual death mask. She always haunts the chapel. I know a good way of warding away such evil spirits. What? A cup of tea and a sandwich. Oh yes. You thought I'd get away with it. You didn't. Hello. Hi. This is Kerry. And this is Kat. And, and we are tea, tea in Valhalla. Valhalla. And today we're at the intriguing and rather incredible Hungerford Farley Castle. Lesser castle though, more a fortified manor and owned for over 300 years by the very famous Hungerford family. Somerset this morning. We are. Um, we're using our English Heritage membership again. Uh, so we parked for free in cahoots with our membership but you would have to pay obviously if you came here on a day ticket yes. um, but well worth investigating online and all the details of today's tour will be down in the description and so they sometimes have little events here so yes. it'd be worth checking for that as well and we're right next to the river through valley yeah so it's a really nice area really pretty gorgeous um, little area just, everything's just open it's just open farmland isn't it yeah. and the hungerford family are quite an intriguing and sometimes a bit gruesome family so that's walk around and that's find out exactly what they got up to yeah, over the got, years you've got buildings you've got a church you've got the crypts yeah we've got tombs yeah and obviously the remains of the towers and the castle around us as well so yes. we'll show you as much as we can Some parts of the castle are actually in really good condition, like this. Tower. Tower here, yeah. Some of these are haunted though. A story I shall tell you later. <laughs> the archway in this one is still intact as well. It gives you a real sense of the, the building, the structure, the fabric of the castle. All the stones, all the moss that's gone into fortifying the walls. So this section of cobbled flooring in front of me here actually is, has been excavated and believed to be part of the stables, the 15th century outer court. It was enclosed by stables built against the castle wall. Sections of the cobbled stable floors have been excavated in this area. So behind me here we have the impressive lady tower look at this wow one of four towers erected at the corners of the castle in the 1370s that was divided into five floors connected by spiral staircase the rooms it contained probably served as small bed chambers for members of the hungerford household oh look as well look a photo uh taken of the lady tower in the 19th, 19th century. century victorian then look the ivy Nature trying to reclaim it back there. You can see the preservation yes. and what they've had to do now, yes. obviously, to restore oh, it. Oh, a lot's been done then, hasn't it? Yeah. It's insane, isn't it? 1370 is built. It's mind boggling, isn't it? Yeah. And look at the th again, what I was talking about earlier the the fabric of the, the building, of the, of the castle and the towers, look how yeah. thick these walls are. And how you know, much labour has gone into building these? Yeah. And it's extremely plush for, for the time, for the era. Yeah incredible to think this was five floors most probably as um, sleeping chambers for the family because it's so plush and it's each one has got a uh, fireplace as well it wouldn't have been for anything other than esteemed guests or yeah. family members i tell you what this tower reminds me it's cricket castle up in north wales yes, exactly remember when yes. they used to host and want That's to right. show off to the the people that would come yeah. and see the castle and the grounds You're and everything else right yeah it's similar this family had a huge amount of money and they were very well connected one of the earliest hungerfords was um the speaker in the in the in parliament which is a very high position especially then even now but on the early hungerfords was a knight who was knighted by king henry the fourth 
and he actually fought at Agincourt. Yeah. So very, they're important people with a lot of money, huge amounts of money. But it wasn't just the wealth, it was the connections. They had um, really good connections. They began royalists, they become parliamentaries, they fell in and out of favour because of that. There was lots of uh, civil war in Britain between the royals and uh, the crown, I should say, and parliament. Uh, the idea that who should have the power and places like this, just like lots of castles in Britain, got sacked um, because certain groups wouldn't want the money and power it wasn't just about the wealth, it was about the connections. It's an amazing ground to walk around as well. You've got all sorts of little break-offs and, and things to see. Look, you can see the, the where the water came in, like here. Yeah, you can see where they would have had water coming through the castle here. They always protected it with these capstones, didn't they? Yeah. So we've got the chapel, the crypt, and the priest houses over here. We'll take you over and have a look in those shortly as well. Yes, I'm um, really but... excited because the crypt is very, very special. It has some... Um, lead lined um, coffins in there which are really special so I'm really excited for that also there's some amazing artwork within the chapel and stained glass windows and some of the stuff fantastic yeah. and like I said it's mostly preserved due to the in and out of, fa of political favour that they had somehow they managed to keep part from being destroyed because usually they would be pulled down and in the priest houses as well I believe there's um, armour there's buffalo hide armour there's pistols and uh, weaponry and things bits of pottery and, and again things that have been salvaged over the years it has been lived in over centuries so of course there's the the history of it and the actual shape and the and the things that they've been able to find go over from medieval period all the way up to the 18th century. Brilliant. So it's yeah, it's really absolutely. Cool. Oh, there's another really intact looking tower over here as well. Oh, wow, so yeah. just lost for where to take you first. To be honest. Look at all this though. Oh, this is the this is the inner gatehouse by the way, Kerry here. So yeah, look at this. Well, you can see that, can't you? you can see yeah. The shape. Obviously, the um, sleeping quarters and all of the family's sort of possessions and things would have been on the in inner gatehouse yeah. area, whereas like the priests and things and the chapel and all that could be on the outer outside. Um, but obviously, it was still protected. But this was more fortified, like I said, because of all the civil war. <laughs> this would have had a moat around it as well, so there would have been a full-blown moat around the castle as well, um, which is interesting. Look at this and also towers are older than the this inside piece because these were the first level of protection that would have been the way and this. then obviously they then did this and then later they obviously fortified it to be um stronger it's, they did like an inner fortification sort of why they called it a castle because it was so heavily fortified yeah. it was almost like a castle but technically not technically <laughs> not and we like it technical don't we <laughs> So many little information boards and things about the place as well yeah, on your tours. Good. Little paddles of information, audio points as well. You can get, um, you know, all the facts. If you haven't got a cat with you, then this is how you can get your information. In the courtyard, we're looking at now, you can actually see the courtyard. You see those cobbles? Yeah. That's the courtyard. This is what they're stood on here. Look how beautiful. very likely to be the ovens area they found an ash pit here that's why they know it's probably the ovens area and probably exactly where um lady agnes burnt her husband to death so you know don't put your buns in that oven look at this though but this is what made Places like this is completely self-sufficient. You never had to open the door. It didn't matter under a siege because you had a fresh source of water in these wells, you know. But it's really creepy, isn't it? It is, yeah. Now, now it's been gated <laughs> off. Uh, so you do check your pockets a lot, don't you? Thinking, uh oh. <sighs> so I'm still inside um, a hall area here was probably built and used for entertainment purposes. This was built in the 1370s? Yeah. Wow. Again, I keep having to double check the, the numbers, the words yeah, coming out of my mouth because it's boggling my brain. <laughs> this is the site of the Great Hall Dias, where the high table stood. 
The rooms beyond formerly belonged to the withdrawing apartment reserved for the family and its privileged guests. Oh, Ooh. wow. Oh, wow. Okay. Beautiful. Oh, wow. I never stop being impressed by these places. Incredible. Oh, the workmanship. Of course, heavily done by the peasants of the area. Nearly always. Typical. Kerry, typical. Beautiful. So there's a little walled garden area here, just on the side of one of the towers, leading off towards the priest houses, where we'll take you next. This is the incredible priest house. This was built in the 1430s for the priests who served here in the chapel for the Farley family. It's actually pretty plush. It's quite a magnificent building. Obviously it has been added on to, but even as a, even as a room, this is pretty nice for the age. So here's some of the original tomb fragments. This is Purbeck marble, so it's not from very far, um, from about the 1500s. Absolutely beautiful for this. It's all been hand chiselled. Obviously the usual heraldry shields. So this is the Halton family from around the 18th century. Beautiful. Another tomb fragment here, again in the Purbeck marble. And again, another coat of arms, again from the Halton family. These were the people who actually bought this place after the fortunes dwindled for the Hungerford family. Wow. Is that massive family? Wow, look at that. Oh, and I love this too. So this was the um, fortified manor, the Hungerford Castle, um, at its finest. This is when it was at its largest. I love these miniature models because I think it really gives a, a great feel. It really helps you yes, get a sense. Yes, I think so, yes. Beautiful, the priest houses. This is where we're at right now with the chapel next to it, obviously. Yes, family tree is insane. It's the Hungerford family tree. Wow. Holy moly. It's how they came to be, I guess. So on the wall of the priest house, they've got this uh, incredible printed version of the original, uh, a drawing by Samuel Prout. And this is of the, this is what the priest house would have looked like from the outside wall. So that's what you would have seen uh, walking by. And of course, we're very close to the River Froome. We're in the River Froome Valley. Wow. Do you want to pop up the top here? Come on, Kerry. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's go have a look. Oh, okay, so they have some artifacts here. So these are super cool. These are all the artifacts that they found here over sort of different excavations and things. These are all uh, medieval, so 13th century jug. Got a strap here, look. With a decorative strap for your scabbard. Isn't that cool? Very they found cool. these things. Obviously, they go all the way up to the 18th century. Yeah. But yeah, really cool. Look at his little face down here as well. Just a bit of decoration. No mm -hmm. need for it. They just liked it. 
pots of jugs, yeah. decorated plates. Look how fancy that would have been though. I mean, that's money, isn't it? A one handled bowl, mm. local floral decoration. The porridge in that, look. I'll get your porridge in it. Oh, they are grotesque. <laughs> That's a stone plaque in the form of a grotesque mask with deeply defined features and our degree is quite grotesque, I'm not sure. <laughs> they were, um, as far as I remember, gargoyles and gross masks and things that they put on buildings was to keep bad things away. Yeah. Demons were yeah. Wasn't it? yeah. Go into another part of the... Wow. Yeah. Oh wow, altar cross, okay, early 18th century, but apparently probably Spanish. Obviously wooden, I presume, is it wooden? Oh no, plaster over wood, oh okay, plaster over wood, interesting, look at that. Display cases are great, aren't they? I love them, look at this. Oh now this gives you a bit of a feel, doesn't it? So this is a pikeman's coat. Uh, so it's a thick coat of buffalo hide. Oh, right. You presume it's leather, don't you? Yeah. It's buffalo hide. It's very leathery. Oh, it's because they wanted to limit the plate armour. I, well, I think I'd rather have the plate armour, thank you very much. Yeah. So these are both from about the mid 17th century. Oof. They don't look easy to wear though, do they? A wheel lock holster pistol down here. This is a 19th century gun it is typical of the kinds of weapons with wheel lock actions that first began to be imported in England in pairs from the mid 17th century. Despite their complex mechanism, well maintained and prepared guns would fire instantly. Where's it firing? It doesn't look particularly healthy, does it? I feel like I would definitely burn my fingers a lot. Yeah. It shows musket holes gone straight through the plate armour. Oh, you can forget the plate armour then. It's useless to me. Give me the buffalo hide. <laughs> 16, a Bible from 1611. Yeah. And it's called the He Bible because there's actually a mistake in it. Oh. There's a problem. Um, and that's here in chapter 13, uh, verse 15. No, chapter 3, verse 15. There's actually a mistake in it. There's a print and error in Ruth somewhere. But it's old English, so it's it just looks like gibberish to me if I'm honest. But you know, Rachel. Remember the Rachel UK? Yeah. She should be able to tell me word for word what this says. Rachel, if you could please drop in the comments, please. What, what is the spelling mistake? So we're inside St. Leonard's Chapel at the moment. Massive open plan style feel to it. Over on the wall behind me, I'll show you it's St. George and the Dragon. Let's have a look at him. That's Cat original as well. That's an original piece, is it? Wow, isn't he amazing? Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. George and the Dragon. It's really cool, isn't it? Another really amazing thing about this church is that the pulpit and the beams are actually been salvaged from the original castle. Oh wow, that is interesting. Yeah, yeah. you can actually see a little bit of graffiti and stuff up there. I do have to wonder if that's from the original as well. So above the wing there is the Hungerford arms, coat of arms, um, with its supporters crest, probably about 17th century, they believe. So St. George and the Dragon is actually from 1440. A lot of the walls, a lot of decoration in this next little room over here. All the walls are painted with the coats of arms and the beams as well. Look, look at this. The tombs. 
So all the stained glass is actually from the Middle Ages onwards. So you've got lots of different, well, you can actually see that, can't you? Some of the dis you've got coloration here, some of it's actually lost its colour, some's black and white and some's colourful. Actually, all they, it's because it was made in different periods, but mm -hmm. some of it is actually um, from the Middle Ages. all these coats of arms aren't they fantastic but again I guess it's 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 showing all different heraldry titles that this family had yeah they were so entrenched in sort of um, the royal and the parliamentary and the uh, history of Britain well not just Britain really of Europe that they've got all these titles that, and all these coats of arms so these tombs are all Hungerfords? Yes, they'll be slightly later on, probably about 17th century, or late 17th century. But they're so well intact, absolutely S perfect. Ornate, really. detailed, yeah. yeah. Incredible. I just put them Look how cool the detail on these. Late 17th century and still so perfect. You've got like a lion for a footrest or something down this side. We're actually going to go to the crypts now because the crypts have some um, incredibly important lead tombs, which is something, again, is um, now extremely rare. It may be one of the best in Britain, actually, because obviously these things would just be taken away, especially lead. Lead has quite a good value still. So um, it'd be great to see them. Let's go and have a look. As serene as the chapel area looks, there's actually a ghost, a spectre or an apparition that's often seen around there. It gives people very uneasy feelings and people see it in the corner of their eye. And that's meant to be Agnes, Agnes Hungerford. Now she was a murderer and she killed her first husband, but she didn't just kill him. She strangled him to death and then burnt him in the kitchen, uh, in the ovens in the kitchen of her own home. Seems a bit insane but she was tried and found guilty they hung her at london's tyburn they didn't just hang her for the murder they also hung her because they believed that she had dark behaviors that she had that she was into necromancy and stuff of that nature and now it's believed that she always hangs around the chapel perhaps looking for redemption but then her stepson walter was also a bit of a strange one He'd had a few wives, but nobody knows what happened to the first two wives. There's very little about them. Sort of just disappeared. And the third wife was actually locked up in the Ladies' Tower. And very unfortunately, she wrote to Cromwell, Thomas Cromwell, and told him of her plight. And uh, he didn't care. He just left her in purgatory. But in the end, Walter was arrested and uh, he was tried for having unnatural behaviours, just like his stepmom. Interesting. Seemed to have run in the family, but not the bloodline. Funny. Maybe there was something dark about them. So we're just going to make our way down to the crypt. Obviously crypts were for family members only. And this one was built in the 1600s for all the members. So look at this. Wow. There's eight crypts in here, uh, all made of lead. Four um, are men, two are women. And there's actually, unfortunately, two children next to that crypt there. You can see that there's a mask on there. And these are actually mummified remains. And that mask is the death mask. So that is the mask um, formed over a deceased person's face and then used to lie in the coffin. And it was actually uh, very unusual because it's an expensive practice. And it's even more unusual that that still exists. Heading into the withdrawing rooms, we think that'll be an ideal spot to grab our first cup of tea. Yeah, withdraw. Grab some tea. Withdraw. <laughs> Withdraw with us. Interesting area. Very nice. Not 
bad place to stop. Beautiful, yeah, and yeah. we won't get in anyone's way here, will we? Absolutely. We're desperate for a cup of tea. Lovely. Oi, oi. Hello. Ideal. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Nice place to stop and have a cup of tea Beautiful. this morning. I love it. Absolutely. Surrounded by all this history and. It's fantastic, isn't it? Amazing, yeah. So, how it got in this state eventually is in the sort of mid 17th century. The last Hungerford to own the place, unfortunately, was a massive gambler. Ah. And he gambled every penny away. So, he was forced to sell it, it became ruined. And the Holtons took it over. And right. they used it as sort of a a bit of a retreat and things and they took some of the stuff away and you know, yeah. antiquities and things. And that was quite normal for the sort of late 18th. But by the 18th century, it was no longer lived in. That's why I only ever gamble in increments of 50 punces. Never risk losing my castle that way. So this beautiful gatehouse to the exterior was built in 1440s. It's absolutely stunning. And just there depicts the coat of arms of the Hungerford house. That's their coat of arms from the 16th century. And the lower bit there is the sickle. You just sort of see that, can't you? And this is some of the outside works, obviously all for protection. Probably rooms that uh, house guard type people yeah obviously that would have changed over the years it would have been soldiers and stuff but then uh, depending on if there was calm during the, the period of time <laughs> or the periods yeah it would have been just servants and things so so this is another gatehouse this area here yeah you can actually walk all the way around the castle as well if you want to all yeah. the forts would you like to let's have a little look why not hmm. stone down the outside of these places give you just as much sort of connection and indication of the people as the inside. Like a, a child down here. Look at this. This is very daunting. And now we're back at the front gate. Really, I should just call it the east gate, but um, this was the, uh, because it is so ornate, they know that this was the, first, the way in the preferred way in. So we're back where we were before. So it's a very different feel from the outside looking in. Yes, I yes. Now, isn't that a reflection of society? <laughs> it is, isn't it? It is, yeah. Okay, we're gonna head back in now. Yep, we're gonna have one last little look round. Yeah, and then we'll head off, I think. Yes. So that's it from us today, from our tour of Farley Hungerford here in Somerset been really interesting to, to walk around the grounds. Oh, that crypt was Great. incredible. I've never seen anything like that. Yeah, I, I love the, um, the the chapel actually, the church. Yeah, well, 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 because of the drawings. The drawings they, on the wall, yeah. the details, again, the, the, the tombs and the crypts in there, really interesting to see. Yeah. And such a, a morbid and, and fascinating story behind this, yes. this place. This family has been very odd over, yeah. the, <laughs> over the centuries. So a great place to come and see. If ever you're in the area and want to have a little explore, would highly recommend it. Yeah, really would. Don't forget, if you have liked today's video, give it a little thumbs up, tickle that like button, a coochie go. If you've got any questions for us, drop us a comment down below. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification. Ding dong. Really appreciated. Uh, until our next adventure, stay safe and well. I keep enjoying those green spaces. You take care. Bye everyone. Bye.